And we are back with more of what's now focusing on health and wellness and right now on those dental fillings. Unfortunately, some fillings may have a mercury, which is very problematic. I recently spoke with two individuals all about this, what the research shows and what you need to do. For 150 years, dentists have been primarily using one type of filling to fill and repair cavity-stricken teeth, but a newly released study indicates that those fillings, which contain 50% mercury, may be slowly poisoning the people they were designed to help. Dr. Micah Geyer and Mr. David Geyer, authors of a new study that evaluates mercury vapor safety limits, are joining us this morning to offer solutions for those concerned about the safety of their dental fillings. Thank you both of you for being here today. Thanks for having us. Dr. Mark, can you tell us about your research and what some of your findings were? Well, the first thing I always want to point out is they're not silver fillings. They're not amalgam, although they are technically amalgam, but they are mercury fillings. The color is silver because it's mercury, and mercury is much more toxic than lead. The studies that we did, the three we have three peer-reviewed publications recently, the first one looks at how many people actually have these. And we found that about 58% of American adults have one or more um, amalgam fillings. Uh, and many of them are over the government safety limits, which by the way, they agree to. They don't, they're not fighting with us about that. They just say, so what, you know, what, what are we gonna do about it? The other two studies we have are much more remarkable. It's long been rumored, including by the government, that these uh, mercury levels are bad for you. But exactly what they do, statistically to prove it, they didn't do. Well, we did a, a careful epidemiological studies on the government database, and we found that if you have amalgam fillings or, or mercury fillings, and you're four times as likely to develop asthma. And the more you have, the more asthma you develop. We're also five times as likely to develop arthritis. These are two very difficult to treat, terrible diseases, they cost the country tremendous amounts of money and this practice needs to be stopped and it's gonna take a long time to stop it. David, why did dentists use mercury and why are they still using it? Well, as you mentioned, amalgams have been around for a long time, maybe 150 years or more. Amalgam or mercury was used in, the, in these kind of fillings because it was cheap and easily available. At the time, people didn't fully appreciate how toxic mercury can be. In the last 50 or 60 years, extensive evidence has been published linking mercury with all kinds of serious chronic health outcomes in humans. And in addition, amalgams themselves now are being linked to chronic health, health problems. Dr. Mark, who is at risk and are there any symptoms of mercury toxicity? Everybody's at risk. It's dangerous to all organisms, organs, but obviously you can't have everybody in the country remove their amalgams or their mercury fillings because there are estimated to be 1 billion such things. And we don't, there aren't enough dentists in the world to remove them all. So the idea is if you're sick, if you have chronic disease, if you're not doing well, you might consider removing them if you can remove them safely. If you get them removed by just having them drilled out, you probably get more exposure than it's worth. Uh, but, but it's a chronic disease. It takes a long time and it's contributable by others. I mean, you're getting mercury from your teeth. You eat a fish, you get mercury. You walk by a power plant, you get mercury. And as, as time goes on, the mercury doesn't leave very well. So you, you get so high enough, especially if you're susceptible uh, to where you can get some really bad diseases. David, what options do we have for removal or replacement? As uh, Dr. Geyer mentioned, it's crucial that if you're going to have them removed, that safe mercury amalgam removal techniques are employed. Fortunately, there are professional groups that actually train dentists to do it in a safe way. Um, there's an organization called the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, or IOMT, that has trained dentists all around the country and local communities to remove amalgams in a safe way. And they even offer a website, iaomt.org, where you, a person can search for dentists who can remove them safely. In addition, there are alternatives. So it's not that amalgams are the only material to fill teeth. 
there are resin-based or porcelain-based materials that are safer and in many cases even more effective at filling teeth than amalgams. And where can our viewers get more information about this? For more information about our research and what other researchers are finding about potential safety concerns with amalgams, there's a website, the pdha.org that's very helpful, as well as the iaomt.org website. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Geyer and Mr. David Geyer, for being here today. I appreciate your time with this concerning issue, and we'll make sure to check out those resources you provided. Thanks for your time today. Thank you for having us. Thank you.